Hey friend, today I want to walk you through how to use my slab templates to make the footed cup project. These templates are available on my website, I will have a link down below, and can be printed right from your home printer. For this demo, I am printing at 100% scale, but these projects work at any scale, so you can size up or down your templates in your printer settings to make the finished piece larger or smaller. The templates come with a set of instructions and are a good project for those just getting started with slab building. The first thing you need to do is cut out the template pieces. We're using templates O, M, and N for this project. These templates actually belong to a larger kit, so that's why the names might seem a bit random. The first thing you need to do is roll out your slab of clay. I am using thickness gauges that are a half centimeter thick so that my slab will be an even half centimeter. My best advice for making good slabs is don't move the clay too much at once. You want to slowly flatten out your slab, turning and flipping it as you go to stretch the clay evenly. If you press too hard on one section, you could create a weak point there that could eventually turn into a crack. Another thing that will help is to compress your slab with a rib. Any rib here will work, but I like to use this blue mud tools rib. By the way, if you're curious about any of my tools, I will have a list of my favorite clay tools linked in the description. Now you just lay out your paper templates and cut them out. Now, before I start assembling, my little trick is to dry my template pieces out just a little bit. So I put them in front of the fan for about five minutes. This will stop your pieces from being very floppy as you work, which will result in a cleaner look. Now, this part is totally optional, but I do think it's worth the effort. Do be careful though not to dry them out too much. If you're seeing cracks as you bend your pieces, that means they are too dry. Okay, so first you want to start with assembling the body of the cup. For this, you will use the large rectangle, which is template M. First, you want to cut the short edges at a 45 degree angle. These will be the edges that we attach together and by cutting them at an angle, we can create an overlap at the connection without adding any extra thickness. You want to use this method if you want the connection points to be invisible. Of course, depending on the look you're going for, you can also experiment with a visual overlap that could look quite cool. You want to score and add a bit of water to the connection points before attaching them together. If you skipped the step where you put your pieces in front of the fan to dry out, you should also skip adding water here as your clay is wet enough and adding water risks making your pieces sloppy and difficult to work with. Blend the seam until you're happy with it and don't forget the inside. It will take some practice making your seams invisible. I don't mind making it perfect because I actually think it looks nice when it has that handmade look. Next, you want to set your pieces aside for a couple minutes so that the water can soak in and your seam can firm up. In the meantime, we can repeat these steps for the tiny rectangle, template N. This part is going to be our foot. Okay, now it's time to add the bottom of our cup. That will be your last template, template O. You want to start by attaching the body of the cup. You'll notice that template O is bigger than it needs to be. This is intentional because you want to attach the piece first before cutting the bottom to size. So you want to use a needle tool to mark where to score and score both sides before attaching them together. Once the piece is well attached, I will then use my needle tool to cut the foot to size and blend the seam. Attaching your bottoms this way, meaning attaching first and then trimming to size, is the best way to get clean, straight bottoms. Especially on a piece that's so angular as this one, I think it's the way to go. But all the templates in my kit work this way because I also think it's easier than the other way around. Lastly, it's time to add the foot. Now that our bottom is trimmed to the right size, I am easily able to find the center and attach the foot there using the exact same methods.
You can clean up your work with a finger or a paintbrush. I like to use the paintbrush to get into the cracks and to smooth out the extra slip. And I always check the rim and any edges to make sure that they're not too sharp. Then your pot is ready to dry out. I recommend you leaving them upside down to dry so that the bottom dries at the same speed as the walls, but the drying time will depend on the climate in your area. In my area, I usually wait about a week until they're fully bone dry. Well, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you want to check out the templates, again, I'll have them linked down below in the description. I'll also include a few extra links like the link to my online glazing class if you're interested in learning all about glazing, as well as the links to the tools that I mentioned. And as always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. I love to hear from you guys. Well, that's it for me today. I hope that you have a lovely and creative day. Bye friend. <laughs>